Handling associations between entities is one of the key features of GORM. In this episode, we will see how to create polymorphic associations in our applications. Polymorphic associations allow a model to belong to more than one other model on a single association. Simply put, it lets an object be associated with different types of objects at once. We'll create a comment model that can belong to either a blog or a photo. This approach is incredibly useful for reducing redundancy. Instead of creating separate associations for each model type, you can have one association that dynamically adjusts based on the object type. Let's see how this works with our sample application. Here we have a simple GIN-based application that uses GORM to interact with the DB. On logging in you get access to a bunch of blog posts and photos. We would like the user to add comments to the blog posts and photos. By the end of the episode, we implement comments related to a blog which will be displayed here. And for the photos too, we will have a comment section. First, we will create a new model file called comment.go. Let's create a new structure called comment. We will first add GORM model to add fields like ID, created at, updated at, etc. Now, the comment can belong to a blog, so we need blog ID here. Or it can belong to a photo, so we will need photo ID. This approach has a problem. What if in the future we need another entity to have comments? We will use polymorphism for this. Let's call any entity or model that can have comments commentable. So we will have commentable type as a field that will store the type of model to which the comment belongs. Commentable ID will store the ID of the related model. And at last we need the content of the comment. Let's add some GORM tags to the model fields. Now add the new model to the migration. Let's go to the main file and add a new API. Blog slash blog ID slash comments. This API lists all the blogs that belong to a blog post. Let's say the handler function is comments list. There is a bit of a problem here. The GIN framework gets confused between these APIs. It considers the comments API the same as blogs slash ID API and includes comments as part of the ID. So we move this API up. Let's implement this handler. We will create a new controller called Comments Controller. The comments URL can be coming from the blog's path or the photo's path. We need to handle both situations in this handler. So, we need to pass the request URL and extract the resource for which the API is called. Let's create a new function for this purpose. Read Commentable. This function takes the GIN context as the parameter. It returns Commentable type, which is a string, and Commentable ID, which is unsigned integer 64. The request URI can be read from the context like this. 
we will split this by slash to get commentable type and ID. Commentable type is splits of one, which can be blogs or photos. Just to be safe, let's convert this to lowercase. Commentable ID is splits of two. Splits is a slice of strings, so let's convert this to an integer. Now, return commentable type and ID. Now we have a function that extracts the commentable type and ID from the request. Let's go back to the handler and use this function. We need a model function to get the comments from the database. Let's say this function is comments find. It accepts commentable type and ID as arguments and returns a pointer to a slice of comments. First, we declare a slice of comments that hold the result. Next, we do a DB query on commentable type and commentable ID to get the desired comments. At last, return comments. We will go back to the handler. Here, let's extract the comments using the model function we just implemented. Next, we will render an HTML view. We will copy the renderer from another controller. Paste it here. Let's say our template is comments list. Pass the appropriate data to the template. And our handler is ready. Next, we need to implement the template. We will create a new directory for comments views here. The new template is list. To save time, I will paste the view here. This template is simple. It loops over comments. It prints the content and updated a timestamp. Let's run the program. Before we go to the application, let's see how GORM stores polymorphic data in the database. I have filled some sample data in the database. Here, the commentable type can be either blogs or photos. The commentable ID stores the IDs of blogs or photos. Let's try the application now. Hit the comments URL blog slash one slash comments. Here, it displays two comments that are there on the blog. There is no way to add a comment. Let's add a form here through which we can add comments. Here I pasted a form that helps us add comments. Here is the action that is called on form submit. It is blank because we want to post on the same URL as the page containing the form, which can be blogs ID comments or photos ID comments.
In the form, there is only one field called comment. Let's refresh the page and the form appears. We need to add a new API. It has to be HTTP POST. We will name this handler Comments Create. Let's implement it. First, let's get commentable type and ID from the request URI. Now, we need to read the form data, specifically the comment posted on the form. Here, using the bind function and the custom structure, we read the posted comment. Let's assume we have a model function, comments create, that takes the commentable type, ID, and the content of the comment to create a new comment. Next, we need to implement this function. This function will return the created comment record. Create a new entry with the past values. Now ingest this entry in the DB and return the created record. In the handler, we will redirect to the current URL. It will render the newly created comment on the page. There are better ways to handle this, but our focus is polymorphic associations here, so let's stick to that. Let's try this out. Posted comment appears on the page. It works. Now let's try this for a photo. And we get 404. I am not surprised we have not added the APIs for photos. Let's do that. Now the page loads. Posting a comment works too. Next, we will try to add the comment section for each blog or photo on the index page. Let's add the comment section on this page as well. For this, we will use the relationship between blog or photo with comments. We will create a has many relationship. In the blog structure, we will add a new field, comments. The field, comments, is a slice of the comment structure. Here in GORM tags, we specify that the relationship is polymorphic. Commentable here specifies the polymorphic fields defined in the comment structure. Now in all model functions, we will use the preload function to load comments along with blog entries. Let's do the same with the photo model. Here in this view we have a list of comments. We will be adding the same list view to this blog page. Let's add it here on the photo page as well. Let's take a look at the view template. This piece of the code here renders the list of comments. We will move this out to a subview to make it reusable. Let's call this list subview. In this view, we loop over the past data which we expect to be comments and render its content and updated timestamp. In this template, let's replace this blog with the subview. Specify the template and pass comments to it.
In the blogs model functions, we fetch comments along with blog entries. Hence the fetched entries in the handler functions already have comments. We will make use of these preloaded comments in the views to display comments with blog posts. In the blog's index page template, we can access comments with dot directive like this. After a blog is displayed, we will add the comments subview. Comments section is encapsulated in this div block. The template is specified here and comments are passed to it. This is a link to the comments page of the blog. Let's see if this works. Now, for each blog on the display page, if there are comments, they are displayed on the page. This link leads to the comments page. Let's add this comments block to the show page as well. Now let's make the same changes in the photo view templates also. Let's try the application. It displays comments on both blog and photo pages. That's a wrap on polymorphic associations in GORM. We've covered what they are, how to implement them, and how to navigate some common challenges. Thanks for watching, and happy coding!